Welcome back to Manchester, everybody. The duel will start at 170 pounds tonight. It'll be Brent Lammers, a junior for West Delaware, and Josh Graves, a junior for Decora. Graves for Decora. They 2-4 overall record, 0-2 on the varsity, and 2-2 two and two in JV. Lammers, pretty good kid for West Delaware, 13-1, a junior. Currently ranked number 10 in the state. Uh, good opportunity here for Josh to go out and get physical with a good wrestler. Lammers with a quick takedown and a quick let up by Lammers to make it a 2-1 to one advantage 12 seconds in. And this is one of those matchups uh, Decor is going to be underdogs against. Uh, you just want six minutes of fight out of a kid here, Josh. That's right. And Graves just uh, did a whistle shot, uh, was unsuccessful with it, and actually got taken down. But he's, he's given a fight. It's 4-2 uh, the score as uh, Lammers does the take him down, let him up uh, thing. We're 30 seconds in to the period as we broadcast from the stage uh, away from the mat. As uh, another nice takedown here for Lammers trying to hook something up and get a pinning combination. Now he has uh, Graves on his back. No points awarded as of yet, though. And now points are being awarded. Minute 15 left here in the first period. Lammers has it in tight, and there's the fall. 49 seconds. And Lammers gives West Delaware a 6 0 lead. And Lammers uh, proving why he's a pretty good kid there. Pretty tough wrestler. Like to see a little better fight off the back there when you're when you're getting taken to your back, but he had something had it locked up pretty tight there. At 182, it's Coy Russell for West Delaware. And also Kyle Hageman for Decora. Hageman for Decora is 3 and 12 on the season, 1 and 11 on uh, varsity. And Russell, a name that uh, many uh, fans will remember from a very good football season, 9 and 7 on varsity this year. Russell and Hageman. Russell just a sophomore. Hageman a senior for Decora. Hageman's put in some good time over the last four years. Uh, real nice strong. Nice double kid. there by Russell to uh, bring down Hageman quickly, and it's 2 nothing. As they work off to the side of the mat, Russell trying to hook something up. Cal trying to establish a base once again, and it's directly to uh, goes to going to the back is Hogman, and Hogman trying to kick out of it. Russell has him in trouble in a 31-second fall, and at the start you wanted to see it's quickly 12 nothing West Delaware. And they have had some nice cradles and some pinning combinations that they've put our guys in so far. So something that the uh, next kids coming up should take advantage of, knowing what's, what's kind of coming. Let's go on to 195. This is Sean Truen, who had a good day up at uh, Fillmore Central, finishing second up there. He is 7-4 and four on the season. And for West Delaware, it will be Scott Taylor, who is 9-9. Nine and nine. So this is uh, maybe one of those uh, matchups that... The Vikes can get some momentum back to their side. Uh, Sean, good, hard-working kid. Uh, had a good day up at Fillmore Central, and hopefully that's something he can build off of because uh, he's got the tools, uh, just might need a little confidence. He sure does. It's always good if he can come off a nice win or a nice weekend because he's, uh, he's got what it takes to do some good things here for wrestling. Truen and Taylor wrestling one another here. Both men just basically working the head right now as... Both these men are seniors. 12 nothing West Delaware, a fall from Lammers at 170 and a fall from Russell at 182. This is the first non-football skill position player to uh, wrestle against the Decora Viking because Lammers, uh, the quarterback for the West Delaware football team. And, of course, um, here is uh, Sean, head outside, single attempt, but the shot was probably from too far away. Taylor able to circle down and get a quick takedown, and it's 2 nothing as they go out of bounds with a minute 15 left here in the first period. It was a nice effort there, but uh, no setup prior to that. Uh, is that a fair way to put it? That's true, Darren. He needs to close the gap a little bit more on that. Not a bad shot, but they're just kind of filling each other out there at the first part. Druin uh, circles into Taylor, has control of the leg, trying to work up from there. Taylor trying to stop the momentum by grabbing the ankles of Truen. One True. minute left here in the period. Truen continues to uh, circle into that single leg. Truen, Truen now has the leg up in the air and is able to cover up Taylor before they go out of bounds to get the reversal, and it's a 2-2 score. Good work by Truen, just not settling for one there. Absolutely. 49 seconds left here in the period as Truen will start top 
here in period number one. 12 nothing. West Delaware leads the duel. We started at 70. We wrestle at 95. Trying to sit out. Here is uh, the West Delaware wrestler and throwing him down is Sean Truin. Truin's got Taylor in a lot of trouble and there's the fall. Sean Truin with the fall in a minute 24 and it's 12-6. West Delaware. How'd that happen? Truin did a great job there. I know just last Saturday they were working on bumping the arm there. Getting when you're in the top position, and uh, kid went to stand up, threw and sucked him back down to his back, and got the fall. And let's move on to 220 right now. Will Wagner of West Delaware and Carter Zidlicky of Decorah. Wagner and Zidlicky. Zidlicky coming in six and four right now. Carter had a good day down here at the West Delaware Invitational, and uh, Wagner. It is right now 8 and 8 on the season. So we start here at 220. It's a 12 6 lead for West Delaware. It's been very quick through the first three weight classes. Falls, two of them for West Delaware in less than a minute. And Sean Trone with the fall for the core up in a minute 24. Sid look he's a good, strong farm kid here. You know, got a good, good stance. Trying to get him down into a front head here. Doing some good snaps and moving his feet pretty well right away. Carter, seemingly a kid that just stays in a pretty good position, doesn't get into trouble too much. That's true, Darren. For a bigger kid, he does stay in real good position. Pretty disciplined, and on a nice single leg here. Trying to switch off to a double, can't control the grip of that. He gets down on his belly now, trying, Wagner trying to circle around and cover an ankle. If he's able to do that, he'll get the takedown, and he does with a minute 13 left in the period. Got to work on finishing those takedowns. He was in on a good one and then kind of went flat to his stomach, and it's hard to wrestle from there. 106 left here in the uh, period. And Wagner trying to uh, lock up a pinning combination as he works towards the near West Delaware bench here on this side. 52 seconds left in the period. And that's the thing with the West Delaware wrestler. Wrestler, uh, once you get uh, somebody down, they're gonna they're immediately just gonna work for that fall as uh, they go out of bounds. 44 seconds left in the period. Uh, you haven't. Without uh, having that mentality, uh, they don't have the success they've had for years down here in West wrestling, uh, Josh. That's true, Dan. We need to work on uh, keeping our head off the mat, keeping our hands from getting tied up here. 38 seconds left here in the period. Wagner in basically a parallel ride, doesn't have anything uh, hooked up now. He's a Zidlke able to get the one arm free from the bottom position, but Wagner... Has the arm locked up right now. 20 seconds left. Trying to run something, but uh, Zidlicki able to escape that grip. 12 seconds left during the period. 10 seconds left in the period now. Which freed off shouting instructions as they wrestle in front of the Decora bench. Wagner hasn't been able to uh, get a re-grip of those arms. And the period comes to a close. It's 2-0 lead for Wagner as we go to the second period. All the core coaches there are pretty much yelling for Zidlicki to get to his base. He did a pretty good job of working up there, but uh, needs to be able to, to get a stand up in there. Zidlicki deferred his choice, and uh, going neutral is West Delaware, but a nice double leg by Zidlicki. He's not able to finish. Wagner able to roll through, gets the takedown, now has Zidlicki on his back. He only got a count of one, though, and Wagner able to cover it up. They did end up giving him two back points there, They, they actually did uh, give him two back points, I see there. Our view is a little bit obstructed, and it's a 6 nothing lead for Wagner. Again, nice shot, just wasn't able to finish. Great shot, the hips just weren't there, got a little cattywampus, I guess you could say, and uh, just needs to work on getting those hips stronger so he can finish those takedowns. 6 nothing lead for Wagner as he tries to lock something up. Zidlicki doing a good job of keeping the arms free. And now Zidlicki able to get free. Wagner still has an underhook in. They go out of bounds. And back to the center we go. And they did award the escape, actually. Uh, so it's 6-1 Wagner. 106 left here in the second period. Wagner with a couple of nice finishes. Now Zidlicki and I a double once again. This time he's able to finish and get a takedown. It's 6-3. Great takedown. Coach Freeoff and all the coaches yelling to cut him because they know if he can take him down like that again, and they want to be able to. And uh, Zidlicki hit for a stall warning as he wasn't able to uh, throw him back down to the mat after Wagner able to get to his feet. 
35 seconds left here in the period. A 6-3 lead for Wagner. But Zidlicki in the top position. Wagner out, able to get free. He gets right on the head of Zidlicki. Able to step around and cover and pick up a cheap takedown. And it's 9-3, to three, Wagner. Yeah, Zidlicki needs to work harder on keeping his head up and getting up to his feet. It's a pretty, uh, pretty poor effort there. You need to be able to stand up and know where you're at in the position of the mat. Ten seconds left here in the second period. A 9-3 lead for Wagner. Wagner trying to tie up the uh, hands. Won't be able to do it. The second period will come to an end. And it's a 9-3 lead for Wagner. And here's Wagner in a position to score bonus points for his team. And frankly, it shouldn't be this close. Shouldn't be. Or shouldn't be this separate, I should say. Right. Zivicki's going to go neutral here. Uh, the core coaches know he can get a takedown. He's just got to stay in good position and use what's left in the gas tank to get a few takedowns here in the third period. He had a nice double, and he's got that double once okay. again. He's able to finish it. Or he hasn't been awarded the points yet. Wagner able to step over but can't put the leg around. Zidlicki covers on the side of the mat, and it's 9-5 to five as they go out of bounds. 143 left here in the third period, and Carter, after that takedown, vehemently being instructed by Coach Friedhoff, Coach Adams, and Coach Kittleson to let him up, so it's 10-5. to five. Carter's obviously comfortable on his feet with this kid. Absolutely. He's got a great double leg. If he can transition to a half, he'll uh, have some good. And here is Zidlicki getting that takedown once again. Wasn't able to get the half as part of it, though. It's 10-7 with a minute 27 left here in the period. Needs to cut him here. Everybody on the bench is yelling cut him. That's the only thing with uh, just the one spotlight I know is coaches don't like it that they feel their wrestler can't see him. Trying to give instruction. 109 left here in the period. Carter now has the arms tied up. Nine to step over. 10-7. Three back points would make it real interesting here. He's got him and on his back. And he's got him on his back. He got a count of at least two. 53 seconds left here in the period. And two back points awarded. Carter being employed to... Cut the guy with 45 seconds left during the period, but, but he he's, wants to turn him. He's trying to turn him once again. 40 <laughs> seconds left during the period. He's got some time here. If he can ride him for a little bit longer, maybe at the 30 second point, cut him and then take him down again to tie it up. And here is an arm tied up by Carter once again, and he's got Wagner on his back. He's getting points. Carter Zidlicky he has him on his back. 23 seconds left here in the period. Lock that arm up. Carter Zidlicky getting three back points. It's now 12-10. He's got to stay in good position here. Eight, seven, six, five. Carter still behind. Wagner as of this point. Carter Zidlicky with a nice come from behind. 12-10 victory over Will Wagner of West Delaware. Good job of wrestling a full six minutes there, Spilly. Absolutely. He uh, might not have done what the coaches wanted him to do. The outcome obviously is good. Uh, you want to stick with the fundamentals there with uh, with the match situation, but uh, he willed himself to win. Richard Heveron will wrestle now for West Delaware and Austin Ashbacker for the Cora. Ashbacker got into action. He was awarded a forfeit against Caledonia on the 20th of this month and went 2-1 and one of the Fillmore Central Tournament. Austin still the number four ranked heavyweight in class 3A. Heveron right now for West Delaware is 13 and 6, so there's no slouch. A couple of seniors going at it. Absolutely. Austin's so athletic here, and, and both kids are. Austin just uh, just a battler. I got a little taste of that last Saturday, and we had a couple goes in the wrestling room. He's he's tough kid. Of course, uh, you know West Delaware respects uh, him him a ton because uh, people remember the district meet down here when uh, Dean Brokhammer, who eventually won the state championship for West Delaware, Austin had him on his back in the district meet in the gym downstairs. And yep. here's the takedown for Austin. It's 2 nothing. Austin's just so quick on his feet, he can get in there on those low singles, and the guy can still be standing there and not even realize what hit him. Actually, this is Colin Weber, I've been told. Colin Weber. It's not Heveron, it is Weber for West Delaware. Austin. Working that hammer lock. I know him and uh, Coach Kittleson work on that a lot in practice. It's a great move. If you can stay in good position, you can really work Kid over well with it. He's got him on his back here. 
And he's going to get the fall. And Callan Weber gets stuck by Austin Ashpacker in a minute 13. And the Vikes now with a 15-12 to 12 lead over West Delaware. Austin Ashbacker, uh, Colin Weber, a uh, kid that was overall 13 and 1, but 10 of those 13 wins were on uh, JV. Don't know what the situation with Heveron uh, was, but uh, the fact of the matter is, Austin basically uh, doing what he should do against a kid like that. Absolutely. It doesn't matter who, who steps on the other side of the mat with you. You do what you're, what you're trained to do and what you do every day. Okay, let's go to 106. This will be Austin Howell, a freshman for West Delaware, and Joe Kanoki, a sophomore for the Cora Joe's, off to a nice start this year, 12 and 3. Joe stays in real good position too. For for a little guy, he's always always scrappy, good position, got some great takedowns. Howell is one and five here on the season, so perhaps hoping for some bonus points are the Vikings here. Joe on a single right away takes him down in eight seconds. To a 2 nothing lead for Kenoki as Howell goes to his feet. Of course, the next weight class has defending state champion and number one ranked kid Patrick Woods for West Delaware. So 15-12, to Decora leading West Delaware. We are wrestling at 106. We started at 170. Joe in a little bit of trouble riding a little high here. Gets a little high, but he settles back down. Some good bonus points here would be nice. We're on the side of the mat right now as Kanoki again got into a little bit of an odd position, but he's able to recover from that position as they go out of bounds with 119 left here in the first period, a 15 to 12 lead. Fortecor in the duel, and now Kanoki will go optional start and take a 2 1 lead as we proceed with a minute 15 left here in the first period. Took him down so quickly, Darren. He knows he can do it again, and he's right back in on a single again. Trying to. Uh, Counter that time was Howell. Kenoki let go of the signal. Howell has it back, steps over, gets the takedown. Didn't get the half, though, that was sitting there for him. And it's 4-1 lead for Joe Kenoki with 52 se seconds left here in period number one. I know they work on that transition to a half a lot in the room, so some of these kids should be able to hit that, but a little slow start to it. Working a nice bar arm here across the back. Joe doing a good job getting off to the side right now. Has the arm up on the back. Goes got, to lock up that farmer. It's a real tight move. And he's got Howell on his back. Only got a count of one. Now steps over to the other side. And he has Howell on his back once again. 22 seconds of which to work with. And there's the fall. A minute 42 on the fall for Joe Kenoki at 142 or at 106. And the Vikings take a 21 to 12 lead. So Joe Kenoki with his 13th win on the varsity thus far, and uh, another uh, one of the little guys uh, doing some nice things for the Vikings. Yep, sophomore going out there and just getting after. He's got a lot of great tools. Uh, not afraid to go out there and wrestle anybody. And here is uh, Carter Hubka taking on the number one ranked kid, Patrick Woods at 113. Patrick Woods, uh, defending state champ, was third two years ago. Carter off to a nice start this year, though. Doing some nice things, eight and six, but I'd have to say as uh, Woods gets takedown, Woods did defeat Hubka down here at the West Delaware Tournament. Carter's faced uh, some darn tough kids at 113 this year, too. Yeah, you just can't be afraid. Even though if you're wrestling the number one kid yep. in the state, you got nothing to lose. He's got uh, a perfect record going, so... You want to just go out there and battle in every position you're in. And you look at the sport of, uh, and here, here is Woods trying to lock up a pinning combination on the side and gets a uh, two count. You look at some of the uh, guys that have uh, fallen in college wrestling uh, so far this year. I mean, uh, proof that anything can happen in this sports building. That's absolutely right, Darren. That's why they wrestle the matches. If it was just done on paper, we'd be out of here by now. So... And we wouldn't have the fun of uh, calling it. That's true. Darren Swenson, Josh Bildy with you from uh, West Delaware tonight. 21-12, Decorah leads the uh, duel. A 4 nothing lead here for Patrick Woods. And now he lets go of Hubka. And it's 4-1 with 48 seconds left here in the period. Woods the defending state champion on that awfully, awfully tough West Delaware team. Woods reaches for a shot. Hip Hubka was able to get the hips back. But Woods gets to the peak through position. Carter had control of the waist for a second, lost that grip. Woods gets the takedown at six to one. 
Hubka's going to battle here. He's a tough kid. Another tough, uh, tough farm kid. Maybe a little outmatched, but he's not just going to roll over and die for him. And now he is getting uh, back points again as Woods. 13 seconds left here in the period. The Vikes are going to be open at 132 tonight. There's three points awarded on the back for Woods. And the first period will come to a close in a 9-1 lead for Patrick Woods on Carter Hupka. Tough first period. Woods is really attacking Hupka's shoulders and arms here, getting him locked up tight and really tearing him out on top. And here is a quick recap of the duels at 170. It was Brett Lammers uh, with 49 second fall over uh, Josh Graves of Decor at 182. Corey Russell, 31 second fall over Kyle Hageman of Decor at 195. Sean Troon with the fall in a minute 24 over Taylor of West Delaware. Carter Zidlicky with come from behind victory at 224. The Vikings, 12 10 over Wagner of West Delaware. Austin Ashpack with the fall in 113 over Weber of West Delaware. Joe Kanoki with the fall in 142 over Howell of West Delaware. So here is a reversal for Woods. Hupka was on top and actually riding pretty well. Ended up locking his hands when they got in a scramble situation. And Woods had enough time to reverse them for a three-point move with the locked hands on top of the reversal. Woods off to a parallel ride but does have the arm tied up on the one side. Good hip pressure on the other. 108 left here in the period. It's a 21 to 12 lead for Decor in the duel. And now Woods working off to the side. Carter still gives him both arms. A double arm bar move for Woods on the side of the mat. Now he spins him back towards the center of the mat. Now he has Carter on his back. Carter in a lot of trouble as the grip pretty tight from Woods. He lost control of the one arm and Carter able to escape it for the moment. Now Woods. Out across the face of Hubka, but Hart Carter doing a pretty good uh, job of fighting off his back right now. Works back to his stomach. That's a real tight move, and, and Hubka was able to get back to his stomach and just give up the three near fall. But now it is 15 to 1 with 25 seconds left here in the period. And might be a minor thing. You give up five instead of six here. I mean, it's a li- you, obviously you're not happy with getting tech, but. It's a, a little bit of a, a minor victory for you. A little bit of a moral victory to not go out and get pinned by somebody. It is a lot of points, but that one point could make the difference at the end of the duel. And now uh, letting, letting him go is uh, Woods, and he won't be able to finish the takedown by the end of the second period, and it's 15-2. to two. And it's Decora's choice. Coach Friedhoff tells Carter to go neutral, and away we go. He wants him to be able to battle on his feet, but statistically, you know, if, if Hubka does get taken down here, it does save one team point. you got to look at that in the big scheme of things sometimes as well. And as uh, my normal broadcast partner, uh, Coach Amdo, would say, uh, why go down at this point? Because you've been down for four minutes. So. Right. Cutter reaching for a shot, stepping over his woods with the arm locked up. And he will get the takedown, and that will be a tech fall. So... Patrick Woods, the defending state champion at 113, gets a tech fall in 4 minutes and 18 seconds over Carter Hubka to pull the West Delaware Hawks within 21 to 17. Let's move on to 120. Logan Riley of uh, West Delaware and Devin Stortz for Decora. Storts off to a 9-6 and six, uh, start this year. And Riley for West Delaware is off to a 10-6 and six start. So, at least on paper, a pretty even matchup. Absolutely. What, we'll see what it's uh, happening on the wrestling mat as both men circling around. As Riley had a nice grip that time. Countering it well is Storts. Storts able to throw, get him back down to the mat but did not get a hand down. He lifts them up once there. again, and he gets the hand down that time, and it's a 2 nothing advantage as they go out of bounds. And that's the difference this year, because in, a, in the old days, that would not be a takedown, but once that hand goes to the mat, it's a two points right away by the official. It kind of takes a lot of the judgment out of the call. It does. In some of those big meets and short time left, it makes all the difference in the world. 125 left here in the period as trying to get to his feet is Riley. And Stortz eventually lets him go and gives up the fight for the moment. It's 2-1 Devin Stortz. 
With a minute 13 left here in the first period, a 21-7 lead for the Vikings. Vikings with falls from Sean Truen at 195. Austin Ashbacker at 285 and Joe Kanoki at 106. And a come from behind decision victory by Carter Zidlicki at 220. Start staying in good position here. Likes to stay low. <laughs> Reaching for a shot and going out of bounds is Riley. 50 seconds left here in the first period. Starts up 2-1. to one. There's been a ton of action for only uh, three points on the board for the first minute and ten of this first period. They're moving around the mat a lot, kind of filling each other out still a little bit. Starts in on a nice single leg, just circling well. Bring it to his feet. Okay, he has the leg up in the air trying to finish the move right now. He's got to hurry that up or he's going to get hit for with the stall call. Oh. And he had his man on his back for a second. He does get the takedown to make it 4-1. The official went down and counted one, but not enough to uh, warrant points on the back. I think he counted one twice, Darren. Uh, West Delaware kid came back off his back and then uh, Sturt, or Sturts put him back on it again for just a second each time. So it's a 4-1 to one lead for Storts as we go to the second period, first period, now done. So Devin Storts, thing I like about Devin, he gets in on those shots, shows a lot of quickness because uh, these little guys will try to fight with their quickness uh, quite often. And Devin uh, probably can counter most guys when it comes to quickness, you agree? He's got a nice transition from, from shot to takedown. Taking down to start the second period as Riley is able to get to his feet. Devin still with the hand control, and they go out of bounds with a minute 51 left here in the second period. No change. A 4-1 lead for Devin Stortz to Cora leading the duel 21-17. to And a caution now on Riley on the bottom man. A little bit of movement from both guys, but... Nothing hurt with one caution. Working off to the side is Storch trying to hook something up up top. He's doing a great job doing that jam similar to, uh, right. to what Sean Truon is doing, but uh, the, the West Delaware kid able to get out. And it's 4-2 lead now for Storch with minute 30 left here in the second period. Devin Storch leading here at 120. Vikings leading the duel 21 to 17 here. Ooh. And here is a nice takedown by Storks at the edge of, edge of the mat. Got in on one leg, covered up the second leg as they were falling out of bounds, but Devin had all points inbounds, so it's a 6 2 lead for Devin. Quickly to his feet comes Riley. Riley doesn't get the hand control, and Devin circles around to cover him up. Got to make an attempt to lift him, and he's going to get a stall call here on the edge of the mat. And out of bounds they go with a minute four left here in the second period. Riley pretty quick off the whistle from the bottom position. But Devin has done a pretty good job of countering that to this point. He's riding pretty well. He, he's able to get some takedowns. I'm a little surprised he's not cutting him to go for more takedowns, but he's riding tough on top. Devin has the leg up in the air right now. He's going to uh, throw him down and couldn't get the half in, so no back points yet. But Devin with a pretty good return to the mat that time. And there's 38 seconds left during the period, a 6-2 lead for Stortz. And now he tries to work a half. He's got a nice lift. He's just got to get out to the side here. He's going to get a call for stalling for riding parallel. Now he does get off to the side as Coach Spildy told him to. I don't know if you can quite hear me from this far away, but I'll get I'll give you the credit, my man. <laughs> I appreciate it. So Devin had the arms around the upper body, now gets the leg up in the air once again. Ten he seconds left here in the period. You gotta Peyton, make an attempt. The assistant coach uh, is going to uh, argue for a stall call, and there's the warning on Storch with t with the buzzer of the second period upon us. It's 6-2, Devin Stortz, and he looks to the coaches, both Coach Kittleson and Coach Friedhoff, say neutral to start the third as Devin has gotten three takedowns to this point. 6-2, Devin Stortz with the lead here at 120. He's got to keep the offense going even here in the late third period. 
staying in good position. Riley's taking some shots though from West Delaware, so he's got to. And Devin has been warned for stalling for getting a leg in the air and not getting the mat return. Another nice, nice head crotch. outside single, high crotch, and he's got him on a had him down for a second. Now Devin in a scramble situation, no points feet. awarded. West Delaware has always been good at, at some scramble situations there, and we got to do a little better job of finishing our takedowns. Getting a little sloppy. And a stalemate called with a minute 22 left here in the third period. Stewart's up 6-2. Riley trying to get back into the match for West Delaware. Stewart knows he can take him down. He's just kind of taking a little bit longer now than he was in the first period, which, you know, he doesn't have the energy he did in the first period, but he's still got to stay in that good position and, and sell it. And you've been out on the mat. Now Devin down to a leg. Trying to counter uh, by controlling the crotch is Riley. And Riley, the best thing he can hope for really here is a stalemate with 50 seconds left, and the ref gives it to him. But Devin was the aggressor off that move. Uh, talk about that mental challenge of being out there. You're in the, the lead. Uh, you don't have the energy you did in the first period. To talk about that mental challenge. How do you overcome it? I know uh, Coach Friedhoff would always tell us in wrestling the best defense is a great offense, and that's that's what you need to do even in that third period. You don't want to have your defense come out, but a good offense is just as good as kind of trying to hold on for the win. And Devin does have to... Uh, be careful, he has been warned for stalling, as we mentioned. 25 seconds left here in the period. Another good shot, he's got a circle. He can pop his head out, he'll have the two, and he wants to get his arm out as well. He's 18 got the leg seconds split. left here in the period. Riley's holding on pretty well, defending it off, and there's two once he gets his arm around him to the back. And the takedown awarded. He's got the leg split, if he had a little more time, he might be able to turn him, but... Three seconds left here in the period, but Devin Stortz up by an 8-2 to two margin. You want to ride him out here because even though we're ahead, this situation can come up later in the season to where you might need to ride a guy out for a win. And the decision goes to Devin Stortz, 8-2. to two. Another one of our lightweights, uh, younger kid that, that just battles hard, sophomore. So let's move on to 126. Colton Mickelson for Decora. And for West Delaware, it will be Sam Phillips. Phillips, the number eight ranked kid at 126 pounds. He is 12 and 2. And Colton Mickelson is 2 and 9. Obviously, West Delaware the favorite here. And uh, it's one of those things. Uh, can you sit, can we uh, see six minutes of fight out of Colton? That'd be that'd be nice to see Phillips in on a shot right away. Gets taken down real shortly, and he lets him up to make it two one. This is one of the another one of those matches. You, you have nothing to lose as the uh, as the decor kid. You know, not as good of a record, and just got to go out there and battle, stay in good position, not give up six points. So that's that's a little bit of a victory for you, and, and sometimes you can even pull an upset. A 4-2 lead uh, after another takedown and uh, let him up situation and contact situation for Phillips. Whistle blows, 123 left here in the first period. Contact situation remedied. You know how that feels. Oh, all too well. <laughs> here is uh, Colton Mickelson. Did get in on a shot, but Phillips uh, able to counter it well and take down Mickelson to make it 6-2, and now he's looking for a turn with 105 left here in the first per period. Phillips Likes lead the duel 24-17, uh, and there's a tight cradle. And the fall. Got to try to work that, that hand off your head. Just one of those little things you work on in the room every day, and you're on the losing end of it, but Little things uh, can go a long way. And the bikes are going to be open at 132. And that will give West Delaware the lead. 24 to 9. Of course, Kellen O'Shea would normally be the 132 pounder, but he was over as he's coming back from an injury. Yeah, O'Shea is actually going to be moving up to 145. Kennedy Folkadol sick for the Vikings tonight, so he uh, will not be able to, to go. 
And now it's Bo Vasky for West Delaware and Isaiah Mitchell for Dakota. Mitchell at 4 and 16 on the season. And Bo Vasky for West Delaware is at 10 and 7. Isaiah, one of these kids that uh, just, to be honest with you, if you uh, had a uh, junior or a senior at uh, 138, and this is not no knock against Isaiah, he'd probably be in there. But uh, sometimes uh, you get uh, freshmen that just need to uh, fill that varsity spot, and I think uh, that's the case with Isaiah for the most part. It's, you agree? It's going to be helpful in the long run for him. Anytime you get a freshman that, that kind of fills a spot there, they're going to get that experience over four years, you know, and uh, just be all the better later on down the road. Exactly. As uh, a shot from a long ways away by a Vasky, Isaiah uh, able to stuff the head but won't be able to get anything out of it, and Vasky back to his feet, no score. 118 left here in the first period. And uh, when you're in situations like this, and I think I think in the couple of years after uh, you graduated, uh, we saw this quite a bit as Isaiah is in on a shot once again. Baskey able to circle finish. around and uh, cover up to make it a 2-0 lead for West Delaware. Where's the balance between uh, knowing the fact that he's getting valuable experience, but... The record might not give him a lot of confidence. How do you balance that? There's uh, there's some of those times where where these younger kids they need they need those two years on JV to kind of build up some confidence and some wins, and then step into the varsity spot. But also to be the best, you got to wrestle the best. And jumping in as a freshman yep. wrestling varsity is not the worst thing in the world. Two nothing lead with 49 seconds left here in the period as Isaiah will try to get to his feet. Good uh, chop down there by. Vasky, Vasky reaching for the far side cradle, won't be able to get that. Now Vasky gets the arm up on the back, but... Uh, Isaiah's doing a pretty good job keeping his head up and, and wrist rolling like they show in practice every day. She needs to work his hips back up and, and get back into that neutral position. Vasky tried the cradle, couldn't do it. Now it's trying for the arm of Mitchell, not able to do it. Vasky doing a good job of getting off the side, but now he has the arm... Uh, He's got a wing and a wrist locked up, trying to step over. Nine seconds left in the period. He doesn't have a lot of time if he's able to connect with this. And Isaiah doing a pretty good job. Uh, he got the hand into the crotch area to stop the momentum and no back points as the period comes to an end. He did a real good job there knowing it was short time, looking up at the clock a little bit and uh, just fighting that off. And a neutral, it'll be Decorah's choice, and a neutral start for Isaiah Mitchell to start period number two. It's 29-24. to 24. West Delaware leading the duel. We're at 138. We started at 170. Here is Vasky in on a double-leg shot. He's uh, able to step over and had, had a scramble. A scramble. Had a scramble situation. He's awarded the takedown. Isaiah was on his back for a second, but able to belly out of that situation. It's a 4 nothing lead for Va Vasky. A little tap and go by Vasky. Caught Isaiah standing up. Standing up straight. He is a taller kid. He to work a little, little harder on getting in that good position on his feet to ward off some of those shots. 170. Uh, it was Lammers a fall for West Delaware. Russell a fall for West Delaware at 182. At 195, Sean Truen a fall for the Corrupt. At 220, Carter Zidlicki a come from behind decision victory. At 285, Austin Ashbacker a fall for the Corrupt. And now Vasky. They're in another scramble situation. Isaiah's doing a good job of keeping his arms from being locked up, but on the losing end of this scramble situation is. 50 seconds left here in the period. It's a 29-24 lead in the duel for West Delaware. Vasky's got the arm locked up. He is awarded three back points. He just has to let go of that pinning com combination to be awarded them. Now he's trying to step over. Isaiah doing a good job of fighting on the bottom. Would have liked to have seen this out of a couple other guys tonight, to be honest with you. And now he's got uh, Mitchell uh, locked up. Have both the arms and wrists locked up. Gets the fall in two or in 337. Good fight for a freshman, though. Good, good positive things down the road for Isaiah. 35 24. West Delaware able to take the lead with the uh, 145 is uh, next in line. And this will be Tim Tutton. Uh, 
Or uh, correction, uh, Tuttons at 52. This is uh, Riley Ryan of uh, West Delaware and Kellen O'Shea of Decor. And Kellen O'Shea puts Ryan on his back right away. Kellen back on the mat after injuring his knee. I believe that uh, happened the week before the South Wind Wrestling Invitational is. They go out of bounds. Uh, three back points awarded for Kellen O'Shea. And it's five nothing lead. They're using two officials here tonight. And the outside one, of the one officials... just and got taken down, but no no points were awarded because he's not wrestling anybody. But well, in the West Delaware uh, cheerleader had a pretty good leg whip that time. She did. She wants her two takedown points. Well, it was alumni night here at uh, West Delaware. They introduced uh, former cheerleaders and statisticians and managers. And those support staff have to be uh, fundamentally sound, too, don't they? Absolutely. There's uh, There's been years in the past where some of our managers know even a little more than our wrestlers. <laughs> at least the ones coached by Spildy back in the that, day, right? That's true. <laughs> Here's uh, Kellen O'Shea with a 5 nothing lead. A minute left here in the first period. 35-24. Recapping the duel, we stopped at Ashbacker before the action picked up in Mitchell's match. Pinocchi a fall for the core out 106. Woods a technical fall for West Delaware at 113. Devin Stortz a decision at 120. Another scramble situation and Kellen able to take Riley Ryan back down to the mat. Sam Phillips fall at 126. Takora was open at 132. Paul Vasky with fall on Isaiah Mitchell at 138. And here we are at 145. Of course, West Delaware are going to end with the number one kid at 160 in Jet Jake Voss. He will take on Cody Rittner. It's good to see some, some battle out of O'Shea here wrestling up a couple weight classes for... He'll be an injured not being able to make weight tonight, but he's uh, taking advantage here. He's wrestling pretty well. Got some nice takedowns. Riding on top pretty tough. Riley did get to his feet, but uh, getting right down to that ankle and uh, knocking him down was Kellen O'Shea. And he will go to the second period with a 5 nothing lead on Riley Ryan. Of course, Decora will get back into action uh, next uh, Thursday night. Walk on in Charles City over at Walk On. And we will have both those duels for you on AM 1240 KDC. And then Chris Flanagan wrestling invitational a week from Saturday. Always a good tournament over there in Cresco. That, uh, Ryan chose down. Kellen let him up with the optional start. It's 5-1. to one. O'Shea with the lead. And... Bottom line, if you're going to let the guy up like this, uh, you got to be able to take him down, and uh, Kellen hasn't been able to do it despite a couple of good efforts uh, on the side of the mat. O'Shea looks a little gassed here. He needs to, uh, if he's going to do this, take him down and let him up. He's got to really, really work hard, get a little conditioning out of this match. And a good take down there for Kellen to make it a 7-1 advantage. And when you're dealing with a knee injury, it's kind of tough to keep that cardio up. Sure is. Uh, there's some other options that they can do. Just got to take advantage of it. And he looked pretty good last Saturday when I stepped in the room for a little bit. A little, little tired, but uh, working hard. He knows it's senior year, and it's now or never. Out of bounds they go with a minute 13 left in the period. O'Shea leading 7-1 to one at 145. We're coming to you from Manchester tonight. Darren Swenson and Josh Bildy. As O'Shea... Covered the guy, decided to let him up, and I think he got a caution for that. Because you do get a caution once the once the referee uh, sets the bottom guy. Even if you do go neutral after that, it is a caution because it was already set in progress. Yeah. Well, Shea does a good job of looking over the coaches, though, so he knew that, that that's what needed to be happening. He just waited a little too long. One minute left here in the second period, a 7-2 lead. And Riley... I think he's uh, seeing that Kellen sucking a little wind as they go out of bounds there. And uh, Riley perhaps sensing a little blood. Here's Riley circling around, trying to finish the takedown. Kellen quickly gets back to his feet to get back into a forehead-to-forehead -forehead tie on the side of the mat. 
Ryan definitely smelling a little blood there with O'Shea real slow to get back. The West Delaware. And, Ke- and Kellen's got to get back to the uh, back to the center quicker than that, or he's going to get hit for so- stalling. There's a lot of officials that would have had him stalled well before that. And, to, and rightfully so, to be honest with you. Absolutely. Even when you're tired, you just got to stay in good position. Here's Kellen getting his man to his feet, and then gets a takedown. Tried to get the half on the way down, but Riley rolled through it. 27 seconds left during the period. Gotta That's a 9-2 lead for Kellen O'Shea. O'Shea has to be careful not to get lax on top here. (laughs) And Riley able to get to his feet. 15 seconds left here in the period. And a stall warning as Kellen O'Shea hung on to him too long. It's 9-3 as they go out of bounds. Maybe a little quick stall there compared to the other times that our kids got called for stalling on top, but uh, it's going to happen. And the crowd's feeding into that for sure. 9-3 Nine to three, the lead for Kellen O'Shea, but it's kind of an ominous nine to three lead right now. There's Kellen. Still out on good, some good shots. And a scramble situation. He can't make anything work before the buzzer at the end of the second period. Coach Adam telling Kellen O'Shea to be mentally tough here, and that's what it comes down to. Even when you're tired, your brain will take you farther than your body will. And Riley, Ryan actually had the choice that time, and he, Kellen was, uh, I think, going to go down, and he let him up. So Kellen now with a 10 to 3 lead. Kellen down on a leg, trying to pull him back in, trying to cover, and he's able to do so to make it a 12 to 3 advantage. And now, if you can keep that score up. You can get an extra team point for your squad. Yep, even with uh, with Kellen being tired here, he is the better technical wrestler and is able to get some takedowns at will on the West Delaware wrestler. 123 left here in the period. He's got to return to the mat. He's going to get stalling again in bad position. He can get headlocked as well. 115 left here in the period. And even though Kellen really wrestling up two weights... A wrestling crowd on the road is going to know this kid's a rank wrestler, a couple of times state qualifier, and probably has a better resume than Ryan does right now. Is Ryan able to get the escape to make it 12-4? O'Shea is real tired here, 50 seconds to go, but he is still taking shots. That's where his his technique does come in over over the West Delaware guy. And uh, the takedown there for Kellen to make it 14-4. And now can Kellen uh, ride him out? He should be able to turn him here. Doesn't take a ton of energy to turn a guy, but when you're tired, you're tired. And He's trying to, trying, to it. trying to roll through was Ryan. He was able to do so from the pinning combination. 23 seconds left in the period. Kellen's still on top. Ryan's not making much of an effort to get off the bottom, so even though O'Shea is riding parallel, hey, he can end up getting stalling against him, but uh, the bottom guy wasn't making any effort to work up either, so... Questionable, but understandable as well in the situation in the match. And it's 14 to 5 after the stall point awarded to Riley Ryan. 15 seconds left in the period, and I think Kellen was asking if he could let him go. Well, you don't want to do that and potentially not to give up a bonus point. It's Kellen out with a cross face and able to muscle him there for a couple back points. And Kellen O'Shea will get a victory here at 145. 16 to 5. And that'll make it 35 to 28. And Alec Felschul will be the next wrestler for the core up. He will take on Timmy Tutton. Uh, Alec uh, having a nice uh, year. You talk about a kid that uh, has a lot of tools to be really, really good. Uh, it, uh, it's this kid, Alec Felschel at 12 and 5. Timmy Tutton, though, is a uh, pretty decent athlete as well. Uh, he was a running back on the football team. Uh, he is 8 and 9 right now. Alec, one of those kids, just uh, having a real good, had a real good 2013. Let's see what he can do here in 2014. He's a goer. He uh, he might not be the most technically sound kid, but he is a hard worker. I remember last year coming out real tough in a lot of matches out at the Iowa City Clyde Bean Tool tournament. But Tutton got an early takedown on him, make it a two nothing lead. And this is a case where Tutton's athleticism probably gives West Delaware a bit of an advantage, but. Alec doing a good job of getting up to his feet there, just out of bounds before he could escape from Tutton. 125 left here in the first period. Scoreboard says 2-0-0. I think it should be 2-0. Yep, I agree. 
And Felstro able to get hand control on the way up after a nice stand-up. He's got to get in position. Doesn't want to rest that knee or his elbow on his knee there. The wrestler will see that and come in and attack on that. 2-1 the lead for Timmy Tutton, who got a takedown right away. Here's Felstro Alec Felstro. Nice, nice double. double leg. No, they're not going to give, it, give to it to him. That's a good call by the official. Alec's leg did step out before he was able to get Tutton down. Close call on the edge of the mat, but who am I to argue with Josh Bildy? <laughs> Tutton, uh, pretty good position here. He's a lot lower than Felstool is. And Felstool with the headlock. Had Tutton on his back, but Tutton able to roll through. And gets a couple of back points on Felstool. Felstool didn't settle his hips when coming down for the headlock. He's got he's to shoot it hard and, and throw the arm out there for the brace is what Coach Friedhoff just showed all the wrestlers on the bench. It's a 4-1 to one lead for Tutton. As no back points were awarded, he just got the takedown points. There were 28 seconds left, and Alec giving up those arms way too freely here. Ouch. And now Tutton has Felshaw on his back. Short time, though. you got to battle. This is where you work extra in the room to be able to battle out of these positions when you're on your back. And, and there's the fall. It didn't go that well. Alec Felshaw gets stuck by Timmy Tutton. And a minute 47, and that will clinch the duel for West Delaware. Sutton with a fall on Felstrow in a minute 47. And West Delaware now with an insurmountable 41 to 28 lead. Felstrow takes off out of the gym. You don't want to show any emotion in the gym in front of your uh, in front of your fans or the opposing fans. So he does a good job of getting out of the room. And let's go to 160. The number one kid in the state, Jake Foss for West Delaware. Cody Rittner for Decorah. Rittner off to a 9-9 nine and nine season. Voss off to a 15-2 and two season. Finished fourth at the state wrestling tournament a year ago. Fifth two years ago. He is the son of West Delaware coach Jeff Voss. Rittner's uh, no slouch here. Good, strong, physical kid. Stays in pretty good position. He's got, he's got some good takedowns in his arsenal. And Cody is 9-9, nine and nine, but uh, here's a, a nice takedown by... Voss to make it 2-0, but one thing we saw out of Cody last year, he definitely wrestled his best in the second half of the season, and that's what matters. Absolutely. It's when it's crunch time. <coughs> hey, an escape for Rittner, and now Voss takedown, trying to cross base. Won't be able to turn him there, so Voss lets him go once again to make it 4-2. 117 left in the first period, and... Good level change there for Voss. He hasn't been able to score off it, though. Locks up the head, circles around. Cody doing a good job of moving for the moment. Now Voss able to get the takedown to make it 6-2. 41-28. West Delaware going to get the dual win on to Cora here tonight. Voss is in the same situation as some of our kids were, not returning Rittner to the mat right away and didn't even get looked at for a stall call, but... Nonetheless, Cody doing a good job of trying to stay in the match. 6-3. He's gotten taken down three times, but he's not going not gonna to quit battling, that's for sure. 6-3 of the score as uh, Boss uh, went optional start the last time. Back to the center they go. 46 seconds left in the period. And I think Cody's one of these kids that's weird enough if you're going to do that, take him down. Uh, and, I, and I say that as a term of endearment, please realize. If he, you're going to do the take him down, uh, let him up thing, he can catch you. One of the times uh, you let you, you let him up for an escape, uh, but Voss gets another takedown there to make it uh, eight three. You agree, Josh? Yeah, you get a little fired up. Uh, I don't want to say it's disrespectful when a wrestler does that, but it, it does get your attention a little bit, saying, "Hey, this guy's taking me down pretty easily. I need to I need to fight a little harder." And, and you can catch him in some stuff if he gets a little lax. Uh, one of the times he lets you up. And oftentimes, uh, coaches will tell you the best time to attack is after you get that escape. Absolutely. Because uh, he, it's human nature uh, sometimes. It's Voss trying to turn him, and Cody basically uh, not letting him do it. And at the end of the first period, Voss with an 8-3 to three lead on Cody Rinder. And it's human nature after you uh, get that escape that there's that uh, little bit of a mental pause. If you can eliminate that mental pause, uh, you can take advantage of it and score some points for uh, yourself and your squad. Best time to score is right after you score, Darren. I know they emphasize that a lot in the wrestling room. Voss starts in the down position. He's able to get a quick escape on Rittner to make it 9-3. 
And the thing of it is, uh, as they go out of bounds, Voss Ritter was... on an underhook. The crowd getting a little little antsy there, thinking uh, Voss would have got a throw there, but they were out of bounds. And normally, a guy like Cody, in most years, would have to worry about a guy like Voss on the way to the state tournament. Voss uh, would take down and make it 11-3. But Decor is in 3A, and these two t- wrestlers will not wrestle one another again this year. And uh, you can only hope that uh, this could be something that sets up Cody uh, pretty well for postseason. Absolutely. Uh, with, with being in 3A, you just have to wrestle one good Saturday versus two uh, to make it down to that state tournament. And anything can happen. You just got to stay positive and work hard, and, and good things can come your way. I think uh, probably the best one in the district. I believe there's a some uh, Clinton kids at 52 and uh, 60, a pair of twins, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. That uh, are probably the best at that weight class, at least on paper. But you know what those media people say. Yeah. So. I'm including myself in that category, and now you have to as well. Sorry, man. No, that's all right. <laughs> not a bad label to have. 45 seconds left here in the second period. An 11-3 lead for Voss, but a lot of fight on the bottom side. Voss has not been able to hook up any pinning combinations on Rittner to this point, and it's not like Rittner's just sitting there doing nothing. Either. No, he's doing a, good, a pretty good job of keeping his head up. Uh, and this is one of those matches that Voss will remember wrestling. You know, that, that stronger Decora kid is, is something that he takes takes back to his his card as well. But uh, Rittner doing a pretty good job of keeping him off, being able to lock anything up. He's got to stand up here. Got an opportunity to stand up. Cody able to get to his feet. Voss still with the hand control, but Voss able to get the mat return with six seconds left here in the period. Voss and the second nice period left. will come to a close and an 11 to 3 lead for Voss. Third period here, Cody. Nothing to lose. And Coach Friedhoff will say neutral start. 41 28 the score. Ostello are going to get the dual win on Decura. A lot of action, uh, some close competitive matches, and frankly a lot of dominations uh, for either side tonight. Here's Cody in on a single. Voss able to get the hips back for the moment. Cody can't keep that leg, and Voss able to circle around and get the takedown. 135 left here in the third period. And Voss will let up Cody and make it 13-4. Team-wise, the outcome uh, isn't where you want it to be, but it's all about how you respond, especially the second part of the season, to a loss like this, which is, is competitive to uh, to other years with West Delaware when it's when it's been a lot more of an open gap. And here is Voss. Went low on a shot. Cody tried to stuff the head, but couldn't keep the head. And getting the takedown is Voss to make it 15 to four. That's the situation we're talking about. Voss wanted to kind of let him back up, and Ritner was quick back into a shot, but unable to capitalize on it. And Voss now trying to for the head in the side cradle. Has the far thigh locked up, and now has Cody on his back. 55 seconds left here in the period, tight. and a fall. So that'll do it for tonight. As West Delaware will defeat uh, Decor up by a 47 to 28 margin. It was Brent Lammers for West Delaware at 170, 49 second fall on Josh Graves of Decor up at 182 is Corey Russell of West Delaware, 31 second fall on Kyle Hageman for Decor up at 195. Sean Truen with fall in a minute 24. Over Scott Taylor of West Delaware. At 220 pounds, Carter Zidlicki with come from behind decision victory 12 10 over Will Wagner of West Delaware. At 285, it was Austin Ashbacker of Decora. The minute 13 fall over Callan Weber of West Delaware. At 106, Joe Kenoki for Decora with the ball in a minute 42 over Austin Howell of West Delaware. At 113, it was defending state champion and top ranked kid Patrick Woods with a technical fall in 418, 17 to 2 over Carter Hubka of Decora. At 120, Devin Stortz with a victory for Decora over Logan Riley of West Delaware, 8 to 2. Sam Phillips with a fall for West Delaware at 126 over uh, Colton Mickelson. In a minute, two. Decora was open at 132 tonight. 
At 138, Bo Vasky of West Delaware with fall in 337 over Isaiah Mitchell of Decorah. At 145, Kellen O'Shea with a major decision, 16 to 5 over Riley Ryan of West Delaware. At 152, Timmy Tutton of West Delaware with fall in a minute 47 over Alec Felstrow of Decorah and uh, Jake Foss with the fall in 5.08 over Cody Rittner of Decorah at 160. So 47 to 28, West Delaware gets the victory here tonight. Uh, Josh, uh, your overall final thoughts on this one? Not a terrible, not a terrible fight tonight. A uh, couple things didn't go our way in a couple situations. Uh, just got to work hard this time of year. Uh, it's all about how you respond after a loss like this late in the, you know, in the second part of the season. And I know Decor doesn't have any competition tomorrow, but that doesn't mean that they can't get a workout in with their buddies out for a run or even uh, throw each other around in the in the basement at home too. So. It's, it's crunch time. It's, it's exciting once, once you turn this corner after Christmas time for wrestling. And uh, it's all about how you respond and, and take advantage of the time left you have. All right, Josh. Uh, nice job by you. Had fun working with you tonight. Uh, you want to do it again next Thursday? I, I don't have anything going on. I don't know what else I'd be doing. So that's all right. perfect. Unless you uh, have to uh, keep working on your second million. but I, I'm doing pretty good right now. I don't have any travels until the following week up in okay. Canada. But uh, I'm available for Thursday. All right. Uh, we'll talk to you then. Uh, Josh Bildy. Uh, exiting the broadcast. Many people to thank for making it possible. First and foremost, our advertisers, the good sports-minded people who helped us uh, bring the coverage wherever you were tonight. Without their help, this coverage would not be possible. So as always, we encourage you to support the businesses who support local high school sports. And lastly, and most importantly, we thank you. That's right, you, the listener, for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. If not, the outcome, final score, West Delaware over to Cora, 47-28. to 28. Next uh, high school sports presentation will come up on Tuesday at the Cora girls basketball team. We'll play host to New Hampton, and that will be a 7.30 start for that one. Next wrestling coverage will be Decorah and West walk on and charles city next uh thursday night from walk on our coverage i think will probably begin about uh, 6 30 because i think uh i think uh walk on and charles city will wrestle first and then decora will wrestle the final two duels stay tuned to the sportscast for all the information on that then we'll have complete coverage of the chris flanagan wrestling invitational as well so for josh Bildy, i'm darren swenson saying so long from manchester west delaware 47 to 28 west delaware defeats decora thanks a bunch for tuning in we'll talk to you again next Tuesday night. Nice job, man. Uh, Seriously.